Okay, now we're ready to go. That's right, I towed an S10 all the way from Southern California here to Washington, and how I did that is, I honestly don't know, I actually have to give the Maverick all the credit here. Now with it being overweight about 400 pounds or so, with the estimate of about, you know, the trailer and the actual S10 with the modified harbor utility bed on there, it comes out to be anywhere from 42 to 4400 pounds depending on how heavy that utility bed was. Now I've done this commute from Southern California to Washington many a times, however, going 55 miles an hour was a real pain, I actually ended up sleeping in my Maverick. So in this video, I know I honestly didn't get as much video as I wanted, but I hope you guys enjoy and I'll do my best to make a fun edit out of it and a good story out of all the videos I have. So if you haven't subscribed to Mechanic Built yet, definitely hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, and we appreciate if you like the video. Now. Let's get to it. So here we start off right in Sacramento, and the reason for that being is when I left Southern California, it was in the middle of the night. And here, I just finished taking a nap at a truck stop, and pretty much decided to start filming my videos. This is Mechanic Built, and I don't know when I post this video, I'll be over a thousand subscriber or just under, but thank you guys for all subscribing. Today, I'm going to be talking about Max Towing the Ford Maverick. Pretty much drove all the way down to California to celebrate my lady's birthday and her anniversary of being together and uh, decided to tow a Chevy S10. Now a lot of people um, say, well Nick, doesn't the Maverick only uh, max out at 4K? Well, yeah, it does. But I did a little bit of math. Four cylinder S10 that you see in the back of the Maverick. It's about 3,000 pounds. The U-Haul trailer is 750 pounds. And since this S10 is a little bit modified, I'm gonna give the bed, uh, adding weight, another extra two to 300 pounds. So if anything, I'm either at 4,000 pounds or about anywhere from 4,100 to 4,200 pounds, give or take. With that being said, let me show you guys what the Maverick has done so far. So as you guys can see, I just filled up. We're about 294 miles to the tank and I just filled up. And you gotta think about it. Before I only filled up maybe like three and a half times coming down here. And I think I've already filled up four times. So I'm thinking that what was supposed to be about a $170 trip is now gonna be about just about $300 to get back home. Uh, to Washington right here you can see my average is 16.6 .6 miles it kind of sucks but at the same time to get about 17 miles of a gallon towing a vehicle I'm not really complaining compared to possibly getting eight or nine say on a v8 so the Mavericks actually doing pretty good when it comes to fuel economy towing out 4,000 pounds but let me guys show you the tow setup you can see the Maverick, I think, is uh, not really squatting that much. I mean, it is, it looks pretty much actually more leveled out than anything, but here is the tow setup. The S10 has its drive shaft disconnected. Again, like I said, it's a four cylinder. Besides the trailer getting sketchy and the straps coming loose, I pretty much lost the S10, but thankfully it dropped to the point where I was able to recover it and made sure these safety chains those little rubber things which I don't really like but made sure the safety chains were properly inputted because I guess this thing just shook itself I have to contact you haul and just let them know that your straps suck on this trailer because I have to tighten them every probably couple hundred miles and it's not because the trailers overloaded I've done this before with a different tow vehicle and never had any problems towing a rear wheel drive vehicle or a light truck on the tow dolly now, as you can see, this is, I believe, a two or three inch drop for the hitch. And then, twist my chains there. That way, they don't drag because obviously the guy from U-Haul, when he hooked it up, it was just dragging. And besides the, okay, I'll just hop back in the car. Okay, now you guys can probably hear me better. I've seen a video where someone was talking about, oh, towing, 
the Maverick at its max was kind of a sketchy drive. I mean, like, you're obviously going to feel 4,000 pounds. I have full control of the vehicle. I have all the control, and it at, at, that actually, when it comes to driver confidence, I feel pretty comfortable. Now, would I recommend you towing the max? If you need to, but would you do it 1,200 miles? I would say if you're fairly experienced and you have patience and you've done a lot of towing, but you have a Maverick that, just like in my opinion, coming from towing from with one ton vehicles to half ton vehicles, this actually, I, I'm, I'm kind of fairly impressed. It doesn't feel as comfortable as if I towed with my one ton van, but like I said, I'm actually fairly impressed. I'll come back to you guys later, probably when we hit a little bit more scenic views when it comes to um, my drive because north of Sacramento I mean it looks pretty nice here as you guys can see but uh, just being north of Sacramento it's, it's honestly kind of depressing once I get out of here let's trek on Ford back home to Washington so as you can see here we're going about just about 64 miles um, an hour the engine itself is just under 2,000 rpms and her gas mileage just sucks and it wouldn't be so bad if I didn't have to look at this depressing scenery but again there you go I don't know if you guys can see in the mirror I'm trying to focus on the road but there is the s10 being towed by a Ford a Chevy being towed by a Ford damn purists hope you guys like that joke I wasn't going that fast. I mean, I was going 60 miles an hour, but as you can see here, I'm still getting passed up by Samis. Even though I'm the one that's still speeding, they still wanted to get ahead of me. However, I decided to go stop off and get some food, do some safety checks with the straps, and also take a look at the drive shaft that I also strapped on. Now, this place is called the Olive Pit. I've always driven by it, so I decided to check it out this one time. I was by myself, so who can tell me what I can or cannot do? So, Got a burger, checked out the olive store because they had an egregious amount of stuffed olives, and I had this to say. If violating olives were a crime, this place would be probably top of the Federal Bureau database. Because I didn't know you could stuff olives with almonds. Well, I get it cheese, but almonds, peanuts, olives stuffed with another type of olive. Like, it was, there was a lot of stuffed olives in there. Now it was back to getting the Maverick, doing double checks because this is Sacramento after all, because anybody could mess with anything out here. I mean, this is California, right? Heh <laughs> heh, Hooker Creek. As you guys can see, we... I don't know if you guys can see it right out there, but Mount Shasta is in the horizon. Now, we are... See here, I have actually been tracking our trip. Out of the 1,084 miles, we've gone 500, pretty much 555 miles. We're about 16.2 miles on average, and we've been driving for 10 hours, even though it feels longer. But then again, it doesn't count for stopping off and relaxing or sleeping. So, um, yeah. So the thing is too, I don't know if you guys noticed, that I have the adaptive cruise control on, and honestly, if you know anything about the adaptive cruises from Ford, you could have your poor man's blue cruise. Now, a lot of people are like saying like, well, are you confident about letting it drive on its own? Well, yeah. I mean, it stays actually, it actually helps when, you know, people are driving like 80, 90 miles an hour past me. It actually helps with the sway. So, talking about that poor man self-driving mode, all I gotta do here is grab my wrist weight, put it on there, and voila. Now I can wrap this up, make this all nice and everything, but now I don't need to worry about putting my hand over here and yeah, because you gotta think about putting my hand here, 10 hours is just too much. Now I'm keeping my eyes on the road. If my hands are off, my eyes are on the road. Just because it, this will shut off if it, like, say, let's see if it shuts off now because we have an opening right here. 
it's wigging out, it's wigging out, but there you go. It's doing just fine. So, that's just one of the perks about this truck, which is nice. Yeah, we're going 60 miles an hour. One, I don't want to attract myself uh, just because I don't have time to get pulled over and possibly get a speeding ticket. So if we go into Oregon on flat land, this thing could easily do 70 miles an hour. So we'll do that once we get to Oregon. Now, here's a good instance for now we're going up a hill. Dropped down to 56 when I set it to 60. Kind of like how it's not trying to overkill the truck, but at the same time, it's probably keeping its distance from that semi right there. So once we get over this hill, There you go. Look at that. It just does. I'm, I'm honestly impressed. I mean, I've towed with newer trucks, and yeah, you know, like like I said, I'm I'm this is I'm not probably gonna be ever doing this again. You know, it's four thousand pounds, maxing it out. I pretty much sold this truck to a coworker of mine. And let's see, let's see. Are you gonna wig out now? No, you're still not gonna wig out. So usually, like I said, going back before I talk about selling the truck. When it comes to the lane, uh, the, the driver assist on this truck and hacking it where it's on its self-drive mode, sometimes it just shuts itself off, so I have to always pay attention to the road. So, just in case, there's two things. One, as a mechanic, I always like learning what manufacturers are doing, and if them saying, oh, every 10,000 miles you should change your oil, I always said that you got to change your oil every 5,000 miles, but I will probably not do this again. Same thing with the towing. I'm not going to tow 1,100 miles from Southern California to Washington maxed out again, ever. And then, uh, the other thing is, I am probably never going to change my oil when the truck tells me to change my oil. Because right now, we're at 69.42 when it comes to the mileage. And I have an oil test kit here. Now this oil test kit, I'm gonna use that in another video. So if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so. Hit the notifications. Had to throw that back because somebody might be cutting me off. But we'll see if actually doing this and not changing the oil at every 5,000 miles actually did ex you know, excessive wear and tear. So with that being said, we're almost at Redding, California, which is pretty much the half halfway point. We're actually 20 miles past our halfway point. We gotta fill up for about half a tank, and we've probably only done about 100, 150 miles. And we're gonna go up the hill, and I'll see you guys there. I'll be putting on the camera, and I'll probably see how this thing does, because honestly, going through the grapevine down by Los Angeles, it did perfectly fine. I was actually skeptical that the thing was just going to go down a hill like a lead sled. It doesn't. Once you get it in a tow haul mode going downhill, you, you still have full control, even if you're a few hundred extra pounds like I am. But let's ignore the fact that um, I am torturing my poor Maverick. So, I'll see you guys at the California Oregon Pass. So this is the part where I'm going to have a full tank and that range is going to hit probably below 200 miles, averaging about 2,500 RPMs, but I will probably be slowing it down to 55. One, I don't want to stress out the truck, don't want to torture it too much. So let's get it down to 55 here and then just stay in the right lane and cruise it. This is probably one of the last steep inclines here in California before we head into the Oregon border. Again, truck does not seem to be bogging down or struggling. I just don't, again, want to torture it. And once we get into Oregon, we'll, we'll push the truck a little bit. That way you guys can see that um, driving this about 70 miles, no issues with the S10 being pulled by the Ford Maverick. So, pass this truck up again, and you know, we're going 48, we're trying to just pass these guys up. They probably pass me on a going downhill, but I can pass them up going uphill. Don't know if that's a flex. You let me know in the comments below. However, we are getting close to the Oregon border. So, I'll see you guys then. <laughs> 
don't know what else to say. I'll see you guys when we get closer to the Oregon border. I don't know if you guys could see it, but it's raining. Yeah, it's raining pretty good. So I got to set up all this into bedding inside. Let's see if I could do this without doing it from the outside because I opened the door, was ready to do it, and then I was just like, yeah, this is not happening. All right, wish me luck. Okay. I, if I seem really close, that's because this is shoved up. Pillows right over here. Air pump is, yeah, it seems like a mess. But there's an air mattress under there if you guys could see it. Got body pillow. Got that. And then I got some magnetic curtains right there. That will cover those windows up. Half-assed this. A little bit more privacy. This I'm not too worried about. This is leading to a highway. If anybody's over here, I do kind of want to see who's peering in on the driver's side. But then I also have this, what looks like a string attached to this, is divider curtains. So, this is a camper Maverick now. I cracked the window open just now, but I am trying to get rid of as much of the moisture I can because it's very moist out here because of all this rain. And then, We'll head to bed but i'll probably see you guys in the morning it is 5 40 right now in the morning probably had about seven hours of sleep it's a little too dark right now to check i did check the trailer i wanted to check how the bed did see how the the weatherproofing of the bed uh held up because it was raining on and off and then I honestly woke up, waited for the rain to calm down, and then used the restroom. And now we're going to go about six miles to take a look at everything. Trailer's fine. No one messed with the trailer. Um, n nothing seems funny about that. I'm still trying to wake up. But we still have about 255 miles to go it says about four hours i'm assuming it's going to take us about five and a half hopefully this pilot that we're going to go to we can pull over and get like a breakfast and everything and go from there so i'll probably see you guys at the gas station all right we're over here at the truck stop so you guys can see safety chains are still good Straps are still good, but I'm curious how watertight this this thing is. Actually, there you go. Now you guys can probably hear me better with the mic. There's a lot of noise going on over here. Now I know when it was raining, water did get in just because I had this open last night. It's actually staying pretty watertight. What I expected water to go down that way. Water's going down that way. But it looks like water is not coming from the back because before I left, I actually installed a well, they're stripping here in the back right over here, so it's holding up pretty well. So, let's get some 
breakfast at the truck stop. Oh, another thing too, guys, if, um, if you guys are interested in that bed, the link is in the description with the, the curtains and everything too. Everything that I used on this truck is in the description if you guys are interested. So let's get some breakfast. I'm debating if I'm just gonna get a truck stop breakfast or maybe go to Denny's. I don't know, we'll see. We got another five hours of this, so. You guys didn't think I'd forget telling you guys how well this thing does driving about 70 miles an hour. So here we are, about 70. And I've been driving for the last few miles. No issues, super comfortable driving this at its max capacity. I mean, when you hit a bump, yeah, you definitely feel it, but it feels like, besides the gas mileage again, it feels like I'm really towing nothing. Well, I mean, I am towing something, but until you hit a bump and then you realize your back end is going, but there, there are no worries whatsoever. I have no issues. We are probably just below 200 miles before our destination. There's this rest stop I wanted to check out that's right next to the river, so we'll, we'll check that out right now up here in Oregon. And, uh, yeah, we'll see from there. Check our straps again, set, check our safety chains, and then hopefully we can finish the last leg of our 1,000-mile max towing adventure. So, let's check it out. Come back out of the bathroom, and I realize how close this semi is. Oh. Well, look at that. It's a river. It's definitely a river. What can I say? This little Ford Maverick showed me that it could tow 4,000 pounds with no problems whatsoever. Whether that be going up hills, down hills, or just coasting. The sway control on this truck and the adaptive cruise control made this whole entire 1100 mile trip comfortable. Now if you've seen my videos before and I've talked about how utilitarian this truck is, that goes to show you. But any truck is utilitarian in any sense, but this truck gets 30 miles to the gallon. But if you gotta tow something like this, yeah, we lose a little bit of gas mileage, but it's capable of doing almost everything in such a small package. And if you guys are following, I will be doing an oil change on this vehicle to see if we did any premature wear, and this is also going to be its first oil change. Now, if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you guys because I don't really post 25 minute videos. So hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, and I'd appreciate if you guys give a like and comment below of what you guys think about towing with the Ford Maverick or if you've towed with the Ford Maverick. And as always, I always try to read as much of the comments as I can. This is Mechanic Built, my name's Nick, and I'll see you guys next time.